Here we are back now in the zone director and as we've logged in you can see that we are in our initial jumping in point which is the dashboard. Before we go any further I just want to remind you that I've zoomed in to 150% just to make things a bit clearer on the screen. If you're viewing this on your zone director then the chances are you'll probably see something like this. I've zoomed into 150 just to make it a bit clearer for you. So uh, in all of the videos we'll be at this 150% resolution unless something changes and I'll point that out for you. But otherwise from now on I won't mention it again but just remember if the screen does look a bit different just to check the resolution that you have. Okay so now we've logged in uh, after a clean install what we want to do is we want to start taking care of administration business before we connect up the access points and think about our users we need to really take care of the admin tasks that are going to underpin the way that we manage the controller so let's begin here then with administer and let's look at preferences and the first thing you'll see is the language of the GUI and this is the language that you set up during the wizard setup unless you've got a good reason you'd probably be leaving this as the selection that you chose now the admin name and password this is what we've logged in with this is the admin name you can see here we've logged in as admin now you can authenticate admins with an external authentication server which is a bit of a complex process so we won't be covering it in this module but do remember that you can authenticate users against external AAA which could be an extremely useful thing to get into and of course if that fails then you've got the option to fall back to the username and password that you've configured into the system so we'll leave that as is. The admin timeout session well that's really self-explanatory if you're inactive on the GUI for a period of 30 minutes in this case then the system will log you out and you can of course change that. The second thing we look at here is the backup and it's a really good idea to get into the habit of making regular backups every time you log into the system and every time you make some changes. It's very easy to make a backup you just hit backup and it will download and store locally and if you want to use that backup file to restore the configuration you can choose to do that here. So again that's a standard best practice. If you want to reset your zone director to factory reset then you just click this button here and it'll erase everything and bring you back into the startup wizard. Here is your option to restart the zone director but also importantly your option to shut down without having to touch the button on the back of the zone director. So this can be a remote shutdown but of course the only way then for you to repower up the zone director is to actually flip the switch on the back but at least here you can do a remote shutdown and a remote restart. Well upgrade is pretty self-explanatory and if you want to know about where you get your upgrade files from then check back to the setup video where I showed you the Ruckus website where you can download the current version and latest versions of the firmware. So you choose the file here that you're going to upgrade to uh, we can also patch access points and again that's a process that we'll look at a little bit later on where we would just want to do a firmware upgrade onto access points but we want to leave the zone director on a particular code. So again I'll show you that once we've got some access points in. Okay, uh, here we have the license and we can see here that we have a license on this zone director for five access points and if you'd like to run up to 150 access points then talk to Ruckus and you can buy a license appropriate for the number of access points that you need. Diagnostics helps us to troubleshoot and we'll look at that in a separate section. Registration gives you the opportunity to register your zone director with Ruckus and that's a good idea to do that so you can put in the details here generate a, a registration file and send that off and then if you ever do need to call support then they've got your details which is a very useful thing to have and they can help you get to the root of the problem a little bit quicker. Here on support there's a couple of things to check first of all if we have a valid license and this is or it's not really a license it's an entitlement and this is what allows us to install newer versions of the firmware. Down below we've got some additional information about the uh, support, um, activate your account, documentation, forums and other things that you can get to. Okay so that's a quick look at the things that are available under administer. Mm -hmm.